point that Kuhn wanted to make is that they are in, the paradigms are incommensurable. One is not just growing out of the other. One is not just improving the other. One is wiping the floor with the other, getting erasing the other and replacing it. It's, a, it's like a social revolution, a political revolution, not, not just a change in government, you know, a revolution. So the, the kind of thing he was thinking of here is the incommensurability of a concept like mass as Newton understood it and as Einstein understood it. The very reality of mass is different for Newton as compared to Einstein. Space, the nature of space, the constitution of space, the properties of space were not just a bit different when we moved from Newton to Einstein. They were completely different. They were di space was a different... You know, in, in, in Newtonian terms, space has no shape. Space is empty nothingness. According to Einstein... Space can alter, space does have shape, and space fundamentally affects the behaviour of objects in space. Now, that, see, the ontology of space is different. The reality of space is different, and they are not commensurable. You can't just swap them about, you know. That, that was the point that, uh, that Kuhn made here. And so you see this theory of incremental progress that through the scientific method, through scientific realism, we're getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to the truth about everything. That's thrown into doubt by this idea of paradigms, incommensurability and revolutions between paradigms. Because, of course, we never know, like a insecure government, we never know when we are going to be overthrown, you know, when our ideas are going to be overthrown, when you, the, the ideas that you develop in your work, the ideas that you publish, the ideas that are the foundation of your career, your intellectual career and your professional career, according to Kuhn, they can be ripped out from under you at, ed at, at any point. So, and that casts into doubt this, this notion that we're, that we're making this, prog this onward march of, of progress. The second point that Kuhn was keen to emphasise was uh, the theory-ladenness of data. And uh, um, someone asked a very in uh, intelligent question uh, just the other day in answer to a problem of, of induction and... The, the, the possibility of always gathering more data. And the question was, how do you know where to look? How do you know which data to select and select out and to look for? This is the point that Kuhn made. Data is always, always theory laden. So supposing you're a scientist and you're trying to choose between two conflicting theories. The obvious thing to do is to look for some data that will help you determine which theory has verisimilitude or which theory is true. And this is what the logical positivists and the scientific realists will tell you to do. Ask nature. Ask reality. But you, but you can't just go out you know, and do that without having some sort of theory to inform your data selection. Data that is independent of theory, according to Kuhn, doesn't exist. Data is selected in the context of theory. It's not above and beyond theory. It occurs in the context of theory. So this idea of a, a reality which is distinct from a theory of reality, according to Kuhn, is wrong. Reality is only accessible to us as data on the basis of a theory that we, that, that, that we hold, on the basis of theoretical assumptions. 
Okay. Um, we've seen before that when data is uh, when data demonstrates that a theory has not been is not supported, uh, when when data casts doubt on that theory, that in and of itself is insufficient to overthrow the theory. We we saw that with the the orbit of the moon and 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 um, and Newton, and we saw it with uh, uh, with Einstein and um, the the curvature of light uh, not being demonstrated. Einstein said, just hang around, it'll be, don't you worry, it'll be demonstrated, and sure enough it was. Um, and we saw it again with Newton and Neptune and, and so forth, and with uh, relativity and the speed of light. Okay. Uh, data in itself uh, is not enough to overthrow, uh, over overthrow these theories. What's needed to create a revolution is a competing theory which is at least as good, which accounts for more, which does more with less, if you like, which has greater explanatory power uh, um, <clears throat> than the preceding ones. So according to this notion, it is theories that overthrow theories, not data that overthrows theories. Theories are the drivers. Theories determine the data. Not data determine the theories. Theories overthrow theories, not data overthrowing theories. And you see, this puts reality in second place, doesn't it? It pushes reality to the background. You remember I mentioned that Popper had three worlds. The world of reality, the world of the mind, concepts, etc., and the world of our received knowledge in our libraries, in our culture, etc., etc. Kuhn is, you know, coming along with this, and he's saying, okay, Popper's first world, the world of, of reality, takes a back seat to the world of our mind and our theories, and to the world of our of our received of our received knowledge. So, I believe in another lecture, Thomas Kuhn is going to be discussed again. Uh, so I'll, I won't say anything more about Kuhn now, but that there will be an opportunity to go further into Kuhn uh, at, a, at a later time. So the instrumentalists are offering an alternative explanation, problem solving, pragmatism, do what works, forget about truth. We see Kuhn is offering an alternative explanation to, the, to a truthful grasp of reality. The alternative explanation is paradigms, paradigm shifts, etc. Et, et a, third, a third alternative to scientific realism <coughs> was offered by a philosopher of science named Merton. Uh, again, quite influential, but not nearly as influential as Kuhn, that's for sure. What Merton did was, went, I guess he, he was the, one of the first sociologists of science. Now, the instrumentalists are not sociologists, they're philosophers of a kind. Thomas Kuhn, something of a sociologist, but more a historian than a, than a sociologist. But Merton wanted to know what science was. He wanted to know the difference between scientific knowledge and non-scientific knowledge. He wanted to know what scientists did. And so he had the clever idea of going out and asking scientists. First time, first time it was done. So he, he, he went around the place and he said, what do you do? Why do you do it? What do you find out? What do you find out? How do you find it out? Those, those sorts of questions. And what he determined as, as a consequence of this inquiry is that science is...